The Ukraine conflict is a diversion to take all our eyes off what the globalists are really doing. And wait till you see what they did behind closed doors on March 1st. Now, all of us are praying for the people of Ukraine and even for the sad soldiers of Russia forced into this conflict. But have you noticed there are some strange things about this invasion? For one, prior to the Russian invasion, we had a trucker protest in Canada and other trucker protests were being organized around the world. The people of the world had learned through the pandemic and the protests not to trust governments and the media. And they were organizing amongst themselves to support these kind of protests. The Canadian government had shown their true stripes, mandating health passports and seizing bank accounts. And now, just two weeks later, the governments are suddenly the good guys protecting us against nuclear war. Wait a minute. How did this happen? Trudeau is still the globalist leader. He always was, right? Why are we looking at him differently today? Well, this channel isn't. But as if right on cue, the Ukraine conflict surfaced to take our eyes off the media and the governments and what they're doing. And 99% of people in Western democracies are buying it. In the President's State of the Union, he said that the nations of the world are now walking in lockstep. An article from the Washington Post said the Ukraine conflict was a turning point in world history for the idea of global unity. Wait a minute, how did this happen? As we reported earlier in this other video, Putin's motives were to stop the aggressive globalists from taking over his nation along with the rest of the world. For that reason, he wanted Ukraine as a buffer between himself and NATO. You see, NATO had promised Russia in the 1990s that they would never expand to the East, like never. And Ukraine gave up their nuclear weapons, the third largest arsenal in the world at that time, on the promise that NATO would protect them. <laughs> there are two broken promises by the globalists just in the last couple weeks. But if they had promised not to expand NATO East, why were the globalists unwilling to simply agree with Russia at the beginning that Ukraine wouldn't be offered a seat at the NATO table? Why not? It would be easy. It would be the honest thing to do, to live by your word. But they didn't do it. Second, when the sanctions were ordered on Russia, why wasn't Russian oil included in the sanctions? The one thing that could have crippled Putin's ability to invade and stop this whole thing before it began. Why not do that? Why allow all this bloodshed and destruction needlessly? Well, because the globalists have other motives. The globalists in Western Europe, the USA and Canada wanted Russia to invade as a distraction, a distraction from their now obvious crimes against humanity in the pandemic and the recent trucker protests and to stop future such protests from derailing their plans to take over the world in a great reset. Yes, the Western powers, the globalists wanted Putin to invade as a distraction. It's a real thing. People are dying and a nation is being crushed but it's orchestrated. And as you're about to find out, the globalists are doing something horrifying right now behind closed doors that threatens to take away everyone's civil rights, everyone on the planet, and you don't know it. We're going to explain that in a moment or so. And more than just a distraction, they wanted to paint Putin as a horrible bad guy. So the world would believe it needed them, the globalists, to defend it against him sort of a good cop, bad cop kind of thing. It should be pretty obvious right now that Putin and the globalists in the UN and World Economic Forum are not part of the same club. In fact, Putin fears them, as all of us should. The globalists have enormous power and are threatening to not only assume power over all nations' national sovereignty, but also to acquire all the assets of the world in a great reset. Putin knows this, and he's attempting to keep his power and money. But in the conflict, the globalists have created a reason that all nations need to band together to fight against Putin and his nuclear missiles. Everything is going the globalist way right now. Fear of the pandemic is fading, so they needed a new type of fear to replace it. And as we said, suddenly no one's talking about truck protests. No one's talking about truck convoys and no one's taking action against the governments and media. Now, everybody is terrified of World War III, right on cue. 
But the conflict is real. People are now hiding in bomb shelters and underground garages in Ukraine. Pretty drastic stuff is going on there. How should we pray for them? Because we should. Well, of course, we should pray for their safety and the safety of the Russians, too, who were conscripted into something they weren't crazy about. And even more so, we should pray for the gospel to go forth. In times of greatest need, people recognize their need for Jesus. Pray for the gospel and pray that the globalists are seen for what they are. You realize while Ukraine is in the news and social media during the distraction politics, the globalists are moving ahead with their real agenda. In the United States, they are rolling out smart health passes in many states, just as the pandemic is fading and there's no real need for such things. They're doing it under the radar. They're rolling it out to usher in digital ID. 10 states already have digital credentials and 20 are working on health passports. Something much worse is being rolled out on the international stage during the distraction. While well, most people are looking at Ukraine, it's the international treaty in pandemic prevention and preparedness, which will turn over all health authority from all the nations to the World Health Organization. Is that who you want telling you how to handle your health? The WHO? If your nation signs on to this treaty, they're basically signing away all your human rights. If you think there are any good politicians in your nation, why aren't they talking about something this intrusive? Our answer is because they're all in on it. And what was the date of the first meeting of the group drafting this proposal? Why, it was March 1st. 2022, yes, right in the middle of the Ukraine crisis, they're selling our souls to the WHO. You might say the USA, Australia, and Europe would never do such things, allow people to die in order to move forward their agenda. Really? They've done it before, several times. Just three days after the assassination of John F. Kennedy in the USA, while the nation was mourning and wondering who the killer was, in the midst of all that drama, the new president, Lyndon Baines Johnson, clandestinely signed papers to send U.S. military to Vietnam. Three days after the assassination. That's how governments work. A horrible, unnecessary war was funded while the nation looked the other way. Of course, the Bible tells us that a world power, Mystery Babylon, will be established. So we are not going to stop these globalists. Revelation 18.23 tells us that the merchants of Mystery Babylon will become the great ones or commanders of the earth because they deceive the world with their pharmakia. Pharmakia, of course, is satanic pharmaceutical sorcery. And this is exactly what we are seeing. What else is the International Treaty for Pandemic Prevention and Preparedness but an offshoot of their pharmakia? In Revelation 17.6, the Bible tells us that this world power Mystery Babylon will be drunk on the blood of the saints. It's going to kill a lot of Christians. It's going to enslave a lot of people. And all of this happens prior to the rise of the beast. Initially, even the beast is under control of his globalist power. So if you think you're going to escape from them in a pre-trip rapture, think again. No one believes the rapture happens before Mystery Babylon. I mean, no one. There is no easy escapism from this. So Christians need to prepare themselves, their families, their churches to face and overcome this monster system that is coming and probably coming within the next couple years. We created a movie to help explain to you how to do all that. It's called How to Prepare for the Last Days, and it does just that. It prepares you for what is coming. If you click right here, you can watch how a Christian can prepare themselves spiritually, emotionally, and physically for all the aspects of the end times that the Bible tells us we're going to face. This is Nelson, and I'll see you there.